All right, you know what that means. It means we're on the lake today. <laughs> Bob and Leroy are on the boat right now. Apparently, there is a good amount of red ear out here right now. Hopefully we get to catch some and we get to cook some today. But we're gonna do some really good fish sandwiches, so pretty stoked for that. It's gonna be a good time. Thanks, Bob. I didn't wipe your seat off. Huh? Probably wet. What? Your seat. Oh, probably wet? <laughs> yeah, I know, I had to wipe mine off. If we find the red ear with worms, it'll be like bang, 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 bang. <laughs> it'll be quick, hopefully. I'm thinking. Wow, <laughs> like but Bob brought us this place. He said, let's try it here real quick. And uh, we nailed them. Well, I'm fishing for crappie. I got a double crappie jig or crappie rig on. So I got two crappie rigs, different depths. Kind of, kind of helps to find uh, what depth they're biting at. First thing to do is go straight to the bottom. And if you don't get a bite there, slowly, slowly come up and then uh, work it that way. And then you find out what depth of crappie. They could be suspended. The other day they were right on the bottom, so it really depends. So I'm put some two split shots on this thing. Might as well. How big of a leader? You're the, you're the panfish expert. Well, I wouldn't have, you don't have to do too big of a leader. Well, six, six to eight inches is good enough. Six to eight inches, all right. And then we got some, some night crawlers. I'm gonna do a whole, a whole crawler. Alright. How deep are we? 40 feet. 40 feet? Mm -hmm. Well, wow. alright. That thus the double split shots. So target species acquired. My my GoPro uh, stopped. <laughs> but got the first red ear of the day. He's pooping a little bit, so I'm gonna hold him over so he doesn't uh, poop on Bob's boat. But uh, that's what a red ear looks like. So Bob, what's the difference between a red ear and a bluegill? Oh, I don't know. I, okay, I'll those show you. Are bigger I'll like show you. Show you. There. See that on a bluegill, right? It's this thing is solid black, and you see that little white ring, and there's that little red spot there. That's why they call it a, a red ear because it's got that white ring, and it's a little red spot inside the white ring. So Same that's what that's why they call it red ear. Same family. But it's. Other places call it a shell cracker. A shell cracker. And same thing. Red ear, shell cracker, same same animal. We got enough to make a sandwich. <laughs> Alright, we're we're gonna pull in now. <laughs> like three minutes, dude. Like three minutes. Yeah, three minutes. That's all we needed. Alright, let's see if the GoPro will catch this next one on camera. But I'm swapping out hooks because the last hook got buried so far. What I'm putting on right now is called an Aberdeen hook, which means that it has that long shank. So no matter how the fish eats it, that shank's going to stick out and I can pull it out of the fish's mouth easy without pliers. Hopefully makes fishing a whole lot easier. See that thing? It's got the really long shank. Only thing is it doesn't have the barbs to keep the bait on, but even if the bait bunches up right here, we'll be fine. So I caught that one pretty much right on the bottom. Actually, I, I felt the, the the split shot hit the bottom and I lifted it yeah, just a little bit. So it is off the bottom. Oh, Bob. That's the sound. Oh, a little bit bigger than that. That's Bob caught one last this, time. It was quite a bit bigger than that one, this guy. That's your sandwich now. You got a sandwich now, buddy. Yep, you got a sandwich. See, look how thick they are. See how thick they are? Get some good flays off that dude. All right, so the bite kind of died. While we're waiting for the bite to turn on here, we're gonna try one more spot and then come back. But we'll see you at that next spot. Oh, getting bit. Getting bit already? Oh yeah, I see it, I see it. There you go. Feel good? Oh no, it's a little crappie or something. Maybe a little ready. Oh, it's a little right here. Yeah. 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 Keep. You don't want to keep these? Yeah. Too little, too small. Too little, too small. Okay. Them, All right. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That's <laughs> edible. That's edible right there. Yeah, you ain't gonna get no flays off that dude. So what are the uh, the requirements? The regulations tell us. No size limit. Twenty five per person in any combination of crappie or red ear. 
So 25 per person. Oh, this one you could really see the red around the ear. Yeah, around the, well, they call it a red. You can really see that it's right there. But if you're a different red. Part, different parts of the United States, they call it a shell cracker as well. Shell cracker. Shell cracker. Yeah, this is like a tiny perch. Yeah. All right. I, I, I That's a solid one. May oh, yeah, that's a red ear. That's a red ear. That's what we're after right there. Oh, oh, he's mad. Oh, he's mad. So explain what we did. You were using plastics, and then what, what, what are we going with here now? Well, I was. I switched over to just a lead head, and I put a night crawler on it instead of doing. See, it's just a it's just a little old lead head with a night crawler on it. So that way you can keep it real close to the bottom and then you can also jig it up. So it allows you to jig it, but then it's also a live bait, so. Nice, and it's sensitive. And it's real sensitive. How's it going? Good, we got some sandwich material. <laughs> sandwich. Yeah, material. Yep, we're gonna make some fish sandwiches. Uh, red ear. They're like bluegill, but they're apparently delicious. And crappie. What are you guys at? Lopez. Oh, okay. Yep. All right, well, now that you've called, we got good luck. We're going to nail them right now, so. Yeah. Yep. Okay, love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Dang it, I just turned off the camera from Veronica hanging up. And look what, look what Leroy's got. There you go. There is something about that chartreuse. Tell you what. That's how you know you're bringing them up from the deep. Their eyes like start to bulge. Dang. Oh, come on, come on. Oh, he's floating. I don't know if you guys can see him, but he's floating around right there. Yeah, when you bring them up from the deep, they can't regulate and their air bladder just explodes. So they can't swim back down. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh! It worked. Look at that. Two on one. Phew. So here's the trick, guys. Here's the trick. To not get spined, these things are super sharp. You spine yourself. You gotta go come in front of it and then move it back like that. See, now you can hold it. Another nice red ear. <laughs> oh, he's really pooping though. I don't want to get on Bob's boat. <laughs> should we? Yeah, we should keep this guy or no? Okay. Oh, that's the biggest one of the day so far. <laughs> you take that back. Keep it. <laughs> did you wreck them? Mission accomplished. Yes, thank you, sir. We did it. Came up before. Came here. Slayed the crappie, oh, excuse me, slayed the red ear. Boom. We will have. It's an official mess of crappie. That's right, blue. it's a mess now. We will have some sandwiches later. Stay tuned, don't go nowhere. So do you do them differently, the big and small ones? Yeah, well the, the small ones we're gonna keep whole, right? So we're gonna we're gonna do those so we can cook them whole because for sense of trying to get a fillet off this little guy. And these ones here is what we wanna get a fillet off of. So when 
I don't know what I do. Cut on that side. Cut on that side. Cut on that side. And that takes the fin out and all the bones. Okay. I'm gonna do the same thing for this side. fin out and all the little pin bones there so all you got to do all you have now is when you fry this all you got is the center line bones in the back one and that's it and all the rest is neat so you don't have to worry about the fin bones on the back or anything so that's the way we do that for the smaller fish and that's how we'll do the crappie this one will fillet but we leave the skin on on these ones yeah because you want the skin the skin on these guys is really tasty Any kind of fish you don't want to, you don't want to wash your fillets off after you cut them. It just don't make no sense. Cage. I don't necessarily want the rib cage. And because the center line bones are in there in the middle, we just cut those out. And there you go. One red ear fillet, half of our sandwich. There's the other half. One sandwich complete. All right, so what we're gonna do now, since there's a, a mess of these fish, we're gonna kind of conveyor line style it. Uh, I'll probably end up doing all the scaling, pass them over to Leroy, let him do Leroy things, and then we'll get to cooking those amazing fish sandwiches, because it's lunchtime, and uh, we would like to partake in what we just caught. <laughs> kind of camp chef huh that's right ziplocks these are our corn chip or our, our uh, corn flakes you don't want to crunch them up too much you want to you want to kind of leave some bigger pieces in there as well you don't want to pulverize it or it's almost like a powder you don't want to do that all right that should be good we're not going to season the fillets because my flour is really highly seasoned. So if I dip it in the flour first, the seasoning will definitely get on the fish. So what I'm doing is I'm just getting a little bit of paper towel out because I want I want to pat these dry. The fillets that we just did. So it's going to be just tacky enough to get the flour around it, and uh -huh. then the flour getting tacky onto the fish gives the eggs something to grab onto, and then right. the eggs give the cornflakes something to grab onto. Exactly. So first step we're gonna do is we're gonna do the flour. So I'll take a, two or three of these fillets and throw them in here. Sprinkle 
このまーす If you wanted a thicker coating on this, you could put it in the egg and then put it back into the flour, then put it back into the egg before you put the cornflakes on the outside. And it kind of makes it a little bit thicker. I don't think we necessarily want it too thick today. Me and Ed were kind of going for the thinner, the thinner crust so <laughs> we can have a little bit of flavor with our fish. So if you stick it in the egg wash, let it drip dry a little bit. Throw it right into the corn chips, the corn flakes. Oops. Let's throw some extra pieces on there. So we got the buns going? Yeah, buns are going. Yeah. Alright, went in room. <laughs> I'm diving on a little piece of this. I'm gonna put the sauce on it. Ooh. Crispy. I like I like the texture. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to taste for the skin. The meat's kinda sweet. Yeah, it's real it's not real firm, but it's it's firmer than perch. But uh, I just like it. I, I, I love any kind of crappie or red ear. Just to me, has that good texture, good flavor. Mm -hmm. you know, different kind of fish. It's sweet, juicy, and it's clean. It's like a really, really clean. Like I don't know how to describe it, but I guess mentally, you think like, man, we caught this fish like using worms. <laughs> it's like, man, how could how good can something taste that? eats worms right but if you can get your head past that it's actually really 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 good well I'm glad I took a bite of it before putting it in a sandwich because the sandwich can really hide things especially when you add mayo and add Thousand Island like we're going to do but that's super clean you know when you put all these different sauces on it when you make the actual sandwich you know it kind of a lot of that stuff has salt in it as well so if you're trying to watch your salt content and you just want to eat a little bit of good fish. But the cornflakes really does add a lot of crunch. That's why if you like if you like to have a lot of texture, a lot of crunchiness, cornflakes is the way to go. It adds that that next level crunch, you know what I mean? So Oh, he's not skimping. Oh heck no man. That is a good looking sandwich. My goodness. Oh yeah, good crunch. A lot better than McDonald's. Well, it just tastes, tastes like a good crisp fish sandwich. I like the crunch. Is that the cornflakes just add that extra crunch? So that's always good. When you're eating fish, you want crunchy out coating or whatever. But that cornflakes really does the trick. They don't get soggy. They stay crispy the whole time. I mean, you can hear this. Yeah, that that's the stuff that we, we fried up. I really want you guys to hear this, but there it is. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's a. That, mm, after a day of fishing and catching and having a bunch of fun with good friends, this just tops it off. Wish Bob didn't have his uh, doctor's appointment. Hope he's all good, but look at that. This tops it off right here. So you guys definitely should do this, but let's see if we can hear this.
<laughs> that spicy mayo. Is that homemade? Yeah. That's a homemade spicy mayo. Mmm. That white meat. <clears throat> that fish. Wow. Tomato and the lettuce keeps it fresh. But yeah. The fish is just really fresh and clean. That's just... If I were to break it down to just a couple, maybe three words, clean, juicy, and fresh. From a lake. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, typical white fish, you know, you gotta put something to it to make it give flavor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm. You know how we do. We're gonna enjoy the rest of this, but hopefully you guys enjoyed, had fun, learned how to do something new, and hope you guys try this yourself on your one of your next trips. Oh, so good. I'm gonna take one more bite, one more bite, one more bite. That's fresh. See how much of mine is gone already. I'm gonna waste no time. <laughs> I'm not too much for talking when there's food on the table. Right, let's just go out and fish. The crappie might not even be biting yet. You know? Like, let me see. Yeah, the crappie ain't biting yet. I can tell by the air. Those, those <laughs> it is a little cold, and your boy your is boy. summertime. Your boy <laughs> is summertime over here. <laughs> yeah, we tried to make a frog leg catch and cook. We had one shot at a frog. And uh, we missed it, yes. but we couldn't find them. Ed, there were so many pool frogs. Ed, there were so the many frogs. The oh before, God, they were everywhere. The week before, I must have had like nine. <laughs> should have been here yesterday. Yeah, always should have been here yesterday. Oh man. Next year, next year we'll do a frog leg catch and cook. So we tried the year before too. We tried. That's two years in a row we tried. <laughs> Ever since Bob met us, we've turned him into a, a panfish guy. <laughs> <laughs> he never thought he'd like it. Is it fun or not? It's, it's fun. It's pretty fun. I don't eat them, but it's fun. You don't eat them? Why not? They're good shiyaki too. Bougie. <laughs> <laughs>